Hey everybody, welcome back and happy Friday. Okay guys, so if we haven't already uh, checked out Hot Messy Topics for today, then definitely go check it out. I am so excited that it's Friday. It is spring. The spring is springing and things are happening. The grass is turning green again. My dead grass is coming back to life. And I see people, real life people. Like I know that you guys are real life people, but like out and about, riding bicycles, trying to catch like, I saw a kid with a legit net trying to catch a butterfly. And I was like, what is happening? Everybody's coming back out to play. Okay. Well, speaking about... um playing. You know who's not? Dorit. While talking about her marriage. Guys, we have the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Dorit Kimsley, who is pretty much outing her marriage issues. And she's also being outed by Crystal Kung Minka for um, a little bit of a reunion discrepancy. So before we jump in, go ahead, pop off in the comment section, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Let's go. <laughs> I can feel that this is going to be a day where we are going to have a little bit of issues with StreamYard, and that is okay. Now, let's get into the Dorit Kimsley of it all because I don't even know where to start. Let's start with this one. Dorit Kimsley is admitting that her marriage got progressively worse after season 13 of the Beverly Hills Housewives. Thank you to realitytea.com. Kyle Richards might be having a tough time on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but Dorit was right there with her. Now, Dorit somehow became the villain on the show by the reunion and was not prepared to be on defense. As always, she relied on being so long-winded that um, even Andy Cohen looked like he was going to go to sleep. Now, during part two of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion, Dorit had a lot of explaining to do. Her friendship with Kyle, her robbery, and the status of her marriage with PK. All of this was on the table. But Dorit did get candid about some marriage problems of her own. However, according to her story, um, she said the ending is a lot happier than Kyle's. I don't know if I believe that. So Dorit admitted that after filming Beverly Hills season 13, her marriage was getting progressively worse. Him and I were probably at an all-time bad. Now, that's what she said while she also insisted that they didn't live their lives separately. PK did spend some time staying at a hotel. Andy's eyebrows raised perfectly, kind of describing how everybody felt about the answer. But ultimately, Dorit said that PK's drinking was causing some tension in their marriage. And she said, I just think that it's very difficult to have clear-headed conversations when he's drinking so much. So he gave up drinking. PK had been nearly 50 days sober by the time the reunion was shot. Now, Dorit concluded by saying that she and PK are working through things, but they're on the up and up, and that was a very pivotal moment. So things are, knock on wood, as good as they can possibly be, is according to Dorit. Good thing she doesn't want to uh, jinx herself, and we all know how fast marriages can turn over in Beverly Hills. So on top of that, Dorit is also honoring her ninth wedding anniversary with her husband, PK, after their marital woes. Ninth wedding anniversary. They haven't been together that long, guys. Dorit and PK celebrated their ninth wedding anniversary Thursday after admittedly enduring some challenging years in their marriage. She took to Instagram to post a series of selfies, videos, and PDA photos from recent years, which obviously is damage control. She also included a photo from their wedding reception of the two tightly embracing each other while dancing. Happy anniversary, baby. I love you. But just like in a blender of different accents. PK also honored the milestone by creating a video montage that chronicled their relationship with throwback photos of the two dating, videos of them hugging, kissing, all of like the fun stuff, especially with their little family of four. Yeah, now a little bit here, a little bit there and said, I'm here. I see you. I love you. Happy ninth anniversary and thank you. So the anniversary came after they spoke about experiencing these crazy marital issues. And um, she did say in her confessional, I love my husband, but I just hope eventually something can change. And it's because I have moments where I worry, will we be able to stay together? She also has said that their issue stemmed in part from her husband having trouble understanding the post-traumatic stress that she battled after the 2021 home invasion. No matter how hard I try, it feels like he's never going to take me seriously and be 
as present as I need him to be when I need him. And maybe he'll never change. But do I have to accept that he won't? Can I? I don't know. I mean, that's fair. PK previously came under fire for admitting he struggled to understand his wife's PTSD. And after the season ended, Dari, um, she addressed the status of the marriage at the show's dramatic reunion by revealing things got progressively worse and hit an all-time bad. But speaking of the reunion, I did want to also mention this really quick. This shit's hitting the fan. So Crystal Kong Minkoff spoke out in a series of messages on Instagram after seeing that Dorit denied having held up the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast for two hours at the reunion taping in January. A two TikTok hour situation. In addition to responding to Dorit's suggestion that she wasn't as late as she was accused of being and her claim that Crystal told a bold faced lie, Crystal reacted to fans accusing her of being a problem friend as she offered an unexpected update on her status with the 14 former friends that she previously suffered a falling out with. No surprise there. Crystal has a very complicated history with the truth. Just ask her 14 former friends is what one person wrote in response to Dorit's denial. But according to Crystal, her relationship with at least three of the 14 friends is in a much better place now. Yes, ask them because I just had dinner with three of them the other night. Hmm. Clap back. I believe that Crystal has a problem with the truth. The show and her 14 ex-friends all admit it. But still, Crystal clapped back throwing shade at Dorit for leaking Kyle Richards' text messages during the taping, writing, I don't share private texts of my friends. She also reacted to a message that read, the arrivals may have been timestamped, but getting on set with a couple of clapping emojis, suggesting the Instagram user was on to something. Hmm. Now, amid part two of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion on Wednesday night, Dorit shared a long-winded response regarding her late arrival to set, which, by the way, is such a bullshit response. Can I just say this really quick? She is late to everything. Everything. So you're like, oh, well, I had they had to sew me into this, and they had to do this. And I get it. It's all about the design and the glam and the glitz. And you would be the worst friend to have because you would annoy the hell out of me. And I'm just going to be very honest up front. I know that everybody wants to look good. You want to look pretty. You want to feel your best. I get that. But you can do that and still be respectful of time. Lisa Hochstein, not this past reunion, but the reunion before. She was so late. She didn't have time to put on her rings. She was like walking out doing a turn. Andy had no time for it. Like you want to look great and you want to be sitting, you know, sitting there and have the compliments. Okay, then be on fucking time. And people will compliment you. But then when you walk out and you act like it's like Paris Fashion Week after everybody's been waiting on you for two hours and you want somebody to give you like this big compliment and like, oh my God, you look amazing. You had a fucking curl on the top of your head. You had a hood on and a dress. It is not that hard, honey. Not that hard. You can pull it together and still be respectful of people's times. You've been doing this for long enough. Like what? Makes no sense to me. What nonsense. That's what Dorit stated in a screenshot shared by Queens of Bravo on Instagram. Our arrivals were timestamped in the first reunion episode. Crystal's claim that I was two hours late to set because I was doing TikToks is nothing more than an, another bold face lie out of her mouth. The entire cast and crew knew that I had an unfortunate wardrobe malfunction with my dress. The small zipper, which closes the dress, broke, and the brilliant wardrobe team that were hired had no choice but to sew me into the dress which didn't take anywhere near two hours. My TikToks were filmed after the reunion. You can see it was dark outside. Hmm. After liking the screenshot, Crystal made it clear that the timestamps had nothing to do with it. Sorry, but nope, those timestamps are wrong. Love you, Bravo. It's not dark at 7.30 a.m. and you don't leave the trailer at 10.30 and walk 15 steps and all of a sudden it's 11.30. And we filmed the first segment without Dorit that began at 11.45 because Andy was getting restless, as were we. Stop the cap and just respect other people's time. Crystal then reacted to someone who accused her of dwelling on minor issues. Dorit isn't lying. It is timestamped. Even the updated one for part two has them all walking around 10.30 a.m. Crystal is always throwing out the smallest things about people or confusing words. We didn't wait on set for two hours. We waited in our trailers is what Crystal said. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shit is hitting the fan. Okay, guys, I want to hear what your thoughts are. Pop off in the comment section. Smash that like button if you haven't already. And also, let us know what you think. Um, I can't wait for this one.
Happy Friday, guys. Love you. See you next time.